Have you ever printed something or ordered a sample and it just was not what you were expecting? Maybe you've been asking yourself, should I use RGB or CMYK? Welcome entrepreneurs, designers, and gurus. It's Leah here welcoming you to POD Labs, where we tackle all the technical and sciencey stuff when it comes to your print on demand shop. Today's topic, RGB versus CMYK. So which should you be using? Well, the answer is both. RGB is a pixel format used for all digital data. Everything downloaded or uploaded on the internet is digital data, like uploading a design file to our mockup generator and it being sent to the print provider. CMYK mode should be used to preview what the end result might actually look like printed onto a real product. If you're already quite familiar with design software, in short, to get the most accurate color representation from screen to print, you should design an RGB format with sRGB color profile, preview the design in CMYK, and then upload the final design to Printify's mockup generator in RGB format. Color modes, also called color space or color format, depending on which design software you're using, are RGB and CMYK, for example. But there are others like RGB 16, gray, and lab, but those are pretty advanced, so we don't need to worry about that. If you're ever selecting colors in software, you might also notice another option, color profiles. Color profiles give more specific information about the selected color mode and show different intensities depending on the type of screen you have. These are the same no matter what design software you're using. For simplicity and consistency, we recommend the sRGB or standard RGB color profile as this is appropriate for most basic screens. Now, some of you might be asking, why did my printed product come out differently than what I had designed in the first place? To answer this question, we need to get sciency first with some physics. When it comes to color, and especially print colors, humans, computers, and printers view things differently. As we can see, CMYK and RGB have different color spectrums, meaning that each can achieve colors that aren't possible with the other. If these three perspectives don't line up correctly, an end product's print colors will look different from that same item on a computer screen. With CMYK, essentially we're removing color or the amount of light that's reflected. And with RGB, we're adding color. This is why with CMYK, we start with white, just like blank products. And with RGB, we start with black. When it comes to physics though, both white and black are not considered to be legitimate colors. White is the presence of all visible wavelengths, while black is the complete absence of those wavelengths. The light source within a digital device creates any color by mixing different amounts of red, green, and blue. All colors start as black, and then RGB lights are added on top of each other to make it brighter and create the desired color. If we add red, green, and blue at equal amounts, we'll get any color from black to white with maximum brightness of each giving us white. So the colors we see in the additive model is the result of transmitted light. To best represent colors on a screen, practically every computer and mobile device on the planet uses RGB. It can be coded so that computers understand, but because of technical limitations, the RGB color gamut or the range of colors is smaller than what our eyes can actually see. Printers, which use CMYK, create an image by mixing different amounts of CMYK colors with ink instead of light, like in the RGB color model. Unlike RGB, which starts as black, CMY starts as white, and each layer of ink decreases the amount of white to create the desired color. This is why we call it a subtractive color model. Essentially, we're removing the amount of light that can be reflected to get the perceived colors. When all the colors are equally mixed together, we get black. But you'll notice that equal amounts of cyan and magenta and yellow end up being more of a dark gray or off black. This is why we have key or black in this color model. This is what gives us a more pure black. Let's talk POD and color modes now. We see our designs in RGB as we're creating them on a screen. Viewing your design in the CMYK color mode will simply guarantee a more accurate representation from what you see on your computer versus the final printed product. Blank white products like t-shirts and mugs, for example, don't give off light like a screen would, but instead throw back or reflect light, which is why it's not possible for printers to use the RGB color system and also why CMYK has a different color range than RGB. 
While we still can't print super bright colors or neons, giving printers a bigger range of color data to work with will lead to better results. The majority of printers are four color printers, C, M, Y, and K. So when RGB files are converted to CMYK, there are generally shifts in color. Usually these are pretty minor, but if your design is color sensitive or has vibrant colors, it can be much more noticeable. Similarly, if you were to upload a CMYK image to the internet, you might also see a shift in color as it would be converted to RGB format. If a printing company says they print using RGB, what they actually mean is that they accept RGB files, but each printer uses their own special RIP software or raster image process, which simply converts a file with an RGB color profile to a CMYK color profile. So before printing, every image goes through this process. Essentially, it tells the printer what to do with an image. Let's look at an example of how your computer will show colors versus how it'll look printed on a t-shirt. Here you see a color chart on your screen. Super bright and vibrant, right? Now on the t-shirt, we can see that a lot of the colors are very close to what's seen on screen, but some of the brighter colors look a bit duller than what we see on the screen. RGB has a lot more shades available than CMYK, and also a backlit screen will create a much more brilliant color than any ink printed on a t-shirt or other material can match. Remember our physics lesson? It's simply not possible to recreate the bright and vibrant colors you see on your screen to physical products. But there are ways to create the illusion of more vibrant hues by using either complementary or high contrast colors. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have complementary colors or colors that are opposite on the color wheel, like red and green, purple and yellow, or blue and orange. High contrast colors would be three colors evenly spaced on the color wheel, like red, yellow, and blue, or orange, green, and violet. Now, of course, it still may not look as vibrant as we see on the screen here, but we've created enough contrast to make the colors stand out even more. There's a lot to think about with colors, and this is why we really encourage you to order samples. You'll be able to see how your designs on screen translate to print on a product. Plus, you'll have a product to create your own mockups or even do a little giveaway. The key thing to remember is that CMYK is used for any design project that gets physically printed instead of viewed on a screen. So if you need to recreate the design you see on screen with ink, an RGB file will give the printer as much data as possible to work with. But previewing in the CMYK color mode will provide you with more accurate results and clearer expectations. Just remember to undo those changes back to RGB before exporting your file. And now you're all POD color experts. Still got questions though? Ask us down below and let us know what other topics you'd like POD Labs to cover. And for all your other POD needs, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.